Dallas Cowboys have signed defensive end Michael Sam to their practice squad. Mike Fisher joining us from 105.3 The Fan, the home of the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. Fish, thanks for being here, man. Is the Dallas Cowboys organization the best team in the NFL for Michael Sam to have a chance to make the team? Well, we probably should start by understanding what I think most football fans do get, that he's not really making the team. Right. He's this is a, first of all, it's a glorious story. And I think most people, uh, most enlightened people understand that. But this is also a glorified tryout. There's, there's no contract here. There's no obligation here. It's, it, they, could, they could release Michael Sam tomorrow. Uh, and, and if they find a defensive end on the street over at Home Depot who's better, they will. Uh, what, so... Do the Cowboys need pass rush help? Absolutely. Uh, does this organization know how to deal with the media circus? You bet. Jason Garrett's handling of the media today was just brilliant. He was his usual robotic self. He could not be goaded into controversy. He could not be drawn off sides anyway. Jerry, I, I believe, is out of town today, so that probably helped. And then Michael Sam, Tony Romo, Des Bryant, and the rest, they handled it all well. Uh, I'm even told that uh, he was just fine on the practice field today, that he actually looked like a real-life football player and not just a guy in a clown suit meant to uh, help the Cowboys with marketing. So this is one tiny, tiny step towards a guy maybe earning a weekly paycheck on the practice squad. Now, we had we heard reports that Jerry Jones uh, called the team leaders, let them know the situation. Is there any chance of, of the locker room not accepting Sam if he is called up to the big, uh, the yeah. big league? Yeah. And first of all, I'm I'm the guy that reported that nice. first that Jerry called multiple guys. Yeah, uh, get fish, go fish, yeah, baby. Right. <laughs> At fish and, sports but, on Twitter. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, fish sports on Twitter. But then it got misconstrued into uh, like Jerry was calling, asking for permission. And I know that he called Des Bryant. I know that he called Anthony Spencer. I know he called Barry Church. I'm assuming Tony Romo was among the people he called too. And, and listen, they're not running a frat house here. We're not we're not taking a vote to see who we're going to allow into the house. This was Jerry Jones calling those people, alerting them to what he wanted to do uh, and what he was planning on doing. And by the way, Jerry at some point must have alerted the scouting department too, because the scouting department has never been fond of Michael Sam as a football player. They have never given him a passing grade, a draft worthy grade, and that hasn't changed. So there's something going on here that's. That's beyond just, hey, let's go straight off our board and straight off our grades. And if it's only the most innocent thing, which is the Joneses saying to the scouting department, listen, what could it hurt? What could it hurt to give him jersey number 46 for a week and see what he's got? Then, again, I applaud that. I sense that there's something a little bit more to it than that. Mike Fisher of 105.3, the fan of Dallas, the home of the Dallas Cowboys. Armin in the back, 104.5, the team, your home for New York sports. Uh, Fish, we talked all offseason about how the St. Louis Rams were stacked at defensive end. What is the depth like for the Dallas Cowboys and, and, and the, the, the uh, chances of, of Michael Sam actually you know, diving into that depth? Yeah, they, they have guys ranked above them, above Michael Sam, uh, who are on the practice squad or in, uh, more frequently, more notably, I guess, on the active roster. You know, George Selvey, guys like Selvey and Mincy are going to start, and most people have never heard of them. No. And guys named Boatwright and a guy with a British accent named Jack Crawford, <laughs> is, is, they're, they're now hanging around here. So, And Anthony Spencer is coming off uh, microfracture knee surgery. He's been out a year. But, you know, he, he might be back in a month. So th- there's, there's no uh, limit to the number of defensive end questions that this team has. I, I just think, I think it's putting too much on the Cowboys because this isn't their intention. And I think it's putting too much on Michael Sam to say, okay, go be better than George Selby because he's not. What's the uh, what's the vibe? Uh, you know, another defensive player that's uh, looking to return to the league. What's the vibe around Josh Brent uh, now going to serve a ten game suspension, but appeal that? What's the vibe with him and the Cowboys organization? Yeah, this organization has stayed uh, bonded with him throughout this whole process, which I think his in his life he probably needed uh, for getting football. Just his in his life he probably needed the friendships that he has from being with the Cowboys. Now his 
uh, drunken driving accident in which he killed his best friend. His best friend was killed with Josh behind the wheel. Uh, that's Jerry Brown Jr. That's a tragedy. I, I don't know that any amount of punishment would have been enough. And so I keep arguing when people debate about the NFL commissioner's 10-game suspension here, too much, too little. Hey, had they given him a 1,000-game suspension, I wouldn't have argued. And I know that it's Josh Brent's uh, agent slash attorney's job to to argue it, and he is doing that. Peter Schaefer is trying to appeal the ruling. I think Josh Brent's focus should be take your medicine and be lucky you're alive. Man, I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. It, it does it... Does it tarnish? I mean, Fish, I, I look at Josh Brennan, the way he's handling it, and the way he's appealing it. Why? I mean, to me, it, it kind of tarnishes his comeback a little bit. As to really, now you want to fight this? Like, you don't think you deserve this anymore? Yeah, one of the problems, of course, in, in pro sports is you're appealing to the judge that just handed down the ruling. So imagine you're in a courtroom and the judge says, okay, that's a $50 fine for speeding. And you walk out of the court, out the front door, then come back in the back door, sit down in front of him again and say, I don't want to pay $50. How much can I pay now? Well, the judge just hits the gavel and makes you pay your $50. So I, I really just think it's a, uh, it's almost a by rote action by the legal world. And Josh Brent would probably be wise to not say anything and let his agent take the heat for doing something that attorneys do, but maybe humans shouldn't. Fish, we uh, we just saw the Sporting News put out a list uh, this week of the ranking all the NFL GMs, and they rank Jerry Jones as the worst GM in the NFL. It, it, he's not the worst, right? Well, they go eight and eight. So first of all, and as Armand knows, I'm I'm a Jerry guy, not not Jerry the GM guy. I'm just a Jerry the guy guy. But surely somebody who goes five and eleven is worse than somebody who goes eight and eight, or no? Makes sense to me. I, it makes sense to me, too. I would also try to help, and, and again, if you're only the most casual football fan, you really don't get this and never will. But what if Jerry's the GM in title only? What if his son Steven's the general manager? And what if the person, the, the guy who's got the title of assistant personnel director, Will McClay, what if he's actually the assistant vice president? And what if Jason Garrett is actually the assistant vice president? Uh, I think they will get so wrapped up in, in Jerry's incredibly high profile, which he loves, by the way. Uh, he, he loves having a high profile that they really don't understand how the organization works. The Michael Sam thing has Jerry's fingerprints all over it. But if you ask Jerry, hey, what do you think of that, uh, that, uh, you know, Joe Blow on the practice squad? He doesn't know who Joe Blow is on the practice squad. That, that's not his department. And so, Jerry Jones, the, the, the old line is Jerry Jones, the owner, is incredible. Jerry Jones, the general manager, is terrible. In fact, Jerry Jones, the general manager, is in name more than reality and isn't terrible. He's 8-8. Eight and eight. He's Mike Fisher of 105.3 The Fan of Dallas, the home of Dallas Cowboys football and fish. Uh, I got to go home for the weekend and see some of my closest friends. Only you were on that list. We hung out at a pool party, drank some beers together. And I came back and I realized that New York – has I've really saturated myself around New York sports and this environment, and there were things that stuck out to me, Fish, as a born and raised Dallas guy that I'd never noticed before. So all day today, at 25 after the hour, I'm giving my top five lists. I'm giving another one off the list of the top five things that I saw in Texas that I've never seen in New York, okay? Yes. So I want you to uh, react as, as I give these. Number five, I saw a T-Boone a Pickens wing at my dad's work. An entire wing was to, dedicated to T-Boone Pickens, and I had to explain to LeVac and the listeners who T-Boone Pickens was. And if you don't know, Google it. That makes sense, right? Yeah, he's a warm-hearted Donald Trump. Yeah. All right. Number four, an entire wall of NRA hats at the feed store. They don't have that in Albany, New York. Huh? Not, not that I've seen yet. I was surprised they were still on the shelf. <laughs> All right. No, uh, I, I tell you what, if you, I bet you if you go up to Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, I bet you find that, but maybe not across your street. Well, the funny thing is that out of the two of us, I'm the gun owner and Armin's not. <laughs> <laughs> Levac, I went to number three. I went to my brother. He lives in the town, small town called Granbury. I went to the Granbury Town Festival, and in the middle of it, there was a large open RV and had a banner on the side of it that said, prayer tent <laughs> yeah that's us yeah there you go all right number two here we go here's my number two 
there is an invitation to a diaper party on my brother's fridge. And under what to bring, it said, quote, bring diapers for Michael, bring shotgun, shells, and clays for yourself. If you're hanging around the diaper and shotgun crowd, you're hanging around the wrong crowd no matter what state you're in. Well, and that, that's, that's why it was on my brother's point. fridge, right? Yeah, babies and shotguns don't seem to be a good mix, but uh, what do I know? Yeah, what do you know? Mike Fisher, you know I'm a lot about you the specified Cowboys. it was a baby diaper. I was getting really concerned. <laughs> hey, Fish, thanks for your time, man. We'll talk soon. Was, this, was that four or is there a fifth? Oh, I'm giving another one, but you got to wait till uh, 620. Oh, okay. I'll be listening. All right. W- wait for an hour. All right, boys. Good talk. Thanks, Fish. Thanks, Fish.